Well, everyone, today's going to be a hot episode of Rolling Rambles. And I don't mean hot as in it's going to be really interesting and spicy so much as it's friggin' hot. You know, I had the heaters running a night or two ago. Actually, I had the heaters running this morning because it got a little chilly overnight. And now it's 85 degrees. So, I'm being brutalized by the weather. At the same time, I have a lovely sinus infection that will affect my voice. I apologize in advance for all the suffering that I'm going through and that you have to listen to. But enough talk. How about you? I put out a call for Roland Ramble suggestions and a couple of things came up and uh, God Almighty, the obvious came up. Sweet baby ink. Am I really going to hop on this train? Am I really going to talk about this? It seems like the longer I wait, the more crap gets dug up about this trash fire. So, I guess we are, and I guess you're going to have to deal with a cough in just a second because I can't stop it. (coughs) I am dead. Ah, there's a lung over there on the floorboard. Anyway, Sweet Baby Ink. What are my thoughts on Sweet Baby Ink? The The whole forced diversity in gaming thing. Well... The problem with them is that they're constantly evolving. My thoughts continue to change because the situation continues to get deeper and deeper. We had a revelation, for those who do not know, we had a revelation um, that a company called Sweet Baby Incorporated, a Canadian company no less, was consulting, and I boy do I use the word consulting in real big air quotes, um, for various major game companies to make their stories more inclusive and diverse and, you know, the usual fluffy language about, you know, making all people feel comfortable playing video games and blah, 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 when really it's just a political ideology that's being shoveled in um, and forced down everyone's throat indirectly through this. And this is the most important thing, I think, and if you don't want to watch the whole video... This sums up my thoughts quite nicely. Sweet Baby Inc. is not the first and will not be the last company to try and pull this political injection as consultancy thing. Yes, there are government departments, there are taxpayer dollars funding Sweet Baby Inc. um, directly or indirectly. And yes, it's Canadian, it's a Canadian company, but the U.S. government funds a lot of initiatives for this kind of stuff. So, even though it's a Canadian company, your U.S. tax dollars are, in fact, being given as government grants to fuel this exact garbage fire. So, taxpayers are paying for a politically motivated company um, to provide so-called consultancy services to game companies that are being essentially forced to pay for those consultancy services by investors, large investors, such as BlackRock and such, that require ESG compliance in order to get better interest rates, which doesn't mean anything if you get a $1,000 loan. A 1% change in your interest rate might mean 10 bucks. <clears throat> but if you are a AAA gaming company that needs to take out a million dollar loan in order to produce your next game, and they'll charge you a 1% different interest rate, uh, that we're not talking about $10. We're talking about thousands of dollars on a million dollar loan over the course of the loan, depending on the term and so on. We are literally talking tens of thousands of dollars at a minimum if they go up 1%. So... You have a choice. Either you qualify for a loan at a, at a higher interest rate or we'll shave off some of the interest. We'll literally, literally give you back or let you keep $10,000 more of what you earn if, if you hire one of these woke ESG consultancy firms that's funded through government grants too to make sure that your narrative complies with the message. It's a mess, and it all really does just come back to the powerful against the powerless. It, that's it. That's, that's the big takeaway that you need to get from this. 
you know what? I, I kind of just realized that I sort of torpedoed my whole video. Um, what's the point of talking about this for 30 minutes straight? I mean, think about this. You have the, the government... <clears throat> the government gives this company money to do the consultation. Huge investors um, force the gaming companies to pay the consultancy company and bring them on to tell them what to do with their narratives, or they'll literally take tens of thousands of dollars away from them. So the gaming companies are kind of screwed. If they don't do it, they, it, they literally, it literally costs them money. They're literally getting charged money to not go along with the message. And you might think that, like, something that where they're, they're not... The, a higher interest rate means you have to pay back more on the loan. Like, you can choose not to do that, but the thing is, if you want to make the game and you have to take out the loan to be able to make the game, what are you going to do? You know, you have to take out a loan to, to make the game. And if if it's literally going to cost you ten or $20,000 to to not comply with the message or whatever, then what are you going to do? You're, you're going to save those thousands. You're going to, you're going to keep those thousands of dollars. It is coercion. You are being forced, not like gun to your head forced, but you are being forced to comply with a political narrative by large investment firms. And the government is behind it all. Like the government is right up the butt of these people. Like, I don't know about the government and the large investors. I don't know if there's a direct link there. Boy, that would just complete the circle, but the large investors are forcing the ESG crap down people's throats, the woke compliance, or you will literally pay for it. You know, it's voluntary in that you can, you can pay us $20,000 more to volunteer not to adopt our political messaging requirements. And then the government's paying the scummy company that you're being forced to consult with, on the other hand, taxpayer money, which means it never should have been taxed in the first place. But and, and it, that's really the meat of it. I just, what more can I say? I could say some more. <clears throat> but it, a lot of it is going to be kind of rehashing what, if anybody who um, has followed this stuff long enough, you'll already know it all. But uh, I've been following the Sweet Baby thing, and it just gets worse. It all kind of started when some guy noticed that Sweet Baby Inc. was um, listed as a consultancy on a lot of games that sucked. A lot. Actually, every game that sucked had this consultancy company in it. Okay, that's not true. Not necessarily every game that sucked had this consultancy company's name in it. But every game that had this consultancy company listed sucked and was wokeified and, and fit the message and catered to a political opinion rather than what the customer, the cash-paying customer, actually wants. When this guy noticed, his name online is Cabrutus, uh, he, he, raised the, he raised the alarm by starting this Steam curation list that all it does is collect a list of the names of the games that have this company as a consultancy in the credits. The vast majority of that list that he has compiled is a list that came straight from their website. So, this is just like libs of TikTok, where all they do is take TikTok videos. <coughs> they take public TikTok videos available to everyone to watch, but they don't necessarily reach a certain audience repost them somewhere or post links to them somewhere where that audience can see them too and they get and the people get mad because now people who don't like what they're saying are seeing what they're saying so they believe in what they're saying enough to say it loudly publicly um, you know basically uh, threaten people sometimes with lawsuits or violence or any you know just any sort of like if you come after me, you know, then you're a racist, whatever. You know, they'll, they'll attack you back if you so much as dare to disagree a little bit. Um, but nasty people posting nasty stuff on a program that Gen Z is obsessed with and just can't stop doom scrolling in. 
and they're being told all of this false stuff. And yeah, TikTok sucks. I, just, I don't even need to go into it. But libs of TikTok, all they do is repost it so that people who don't like that stuff see it too. So it's not hidden away on TikTok, only shown to people who fall into the right filter bubble. They pull it out and go, this is what teachers are saying publicly. <clears throat> I'm not reporting on what the teachers say publicly. I'm just going to post them saying it in their own words with their own faces in their own classrooms decorated with their own Hitler-esque crap in multiple colors. So, the, um, the STEAM curation list, Sweet Baby Ink Detected, exploded in virality on the internet. The Streisand effect went into full effect after a Sweet Baby Ink guy basically tried to cancel the guy behind it. <clears throat> Not only coming after the list uh, itself, but also going trying to get people to mass flag the guy's personal account. We've seen this cancel campaign thing a million times before in the past 10 or 15 years. Ever since the social justice warrior freaks took over pop culture by force through back channels. And that's it, really. It's The Sweet Baby Ink thing is exactly that. The, the loony leftists, they win because they do dishonest, out-of-the-way things. They, they try to hide the way that they screw people. They don't win by facing you... In, in some sort of honorable duel. They don't win by making rational, logical arguments. They win the culture war by going to people in news agencies, um, finding people in new news agencies that agree with them, and then, you know, being all buddy-buddy, like, hey, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. You know, you take care of me, I'll take care of you. Nobody sees it. It's all backroom deals. The kind of thing that everybody hates about capitalism or any economic system. Fuck capitalism. Every single economic system is full of corruption. Capitalism has a tendency to have the least of it. But still, it's the one thing that in every economic system that you can imagine everybody hates is the whole backroom deal corruption thing. Leftists win by corrupting people. Corrupting entities. Leftism, and when I say leftist, I interchangeably use leftist, social justice warrior, Marxist, woke, because it really does, at the end of the day, boil down to Marxism. If you really want to get correct, it's Marxism. Um, some people call it cultural Marxism, <clears throat> but I think that that label is a little bit um, misleading because it's limited to culture. No, it, it's all Marxism. It's all this vague notion that no, but, you know, nothing can be right until there's a revolution that destroys everything. And only then can we build things back in this ideal way that everybody uh, over the past hundred years has, uh, in Europe and Asia and such, have already done. And it didn't work, and it'll never work. But whatever, buddy. The problem is there are people who profit, um, people who make a lot of money, and who have a lot of their shady dealings shielded by bad behavior by corruption, by pitting people against each other so they don't notice that this big guy is secretly, you know, pickpocketing their wallets and so on. There are a lot of powerful people who benefit a lot from the, the chaos that Marxism causes um, and that leftism causes in an otherwise stable, functional society. Sweet Baby Ink is really a symptom of a bigger problem. And that problem is that we don't get rid of these people that cause it in the first place. There needs to be a cancel campaign against these huge investment firms. And we're starting to see that kind of take fold with uh, some governors declaring typically right-leaning right states like Florida, um, Ron DeSantis, you know, governors that are declaring... If you go against the uh, industries that power our state, like I think it was Oregon or Idaho or something or Wyoming, um, signed into law that no government pensions or retirement plans will ever, like the funds are, it's illegal to put the funds into any of these companies um, that basically like, oh, well, this state makes most of its money on oil and gas production. So why are we giving these huge institutional investors millions of dollars of our money to basically go out and tell everybody else, don't 
Don't do business with them. Don't spend money with them. It's like you're paying for your own destruction. I don't understand why this correction hasn't happened 10 or 15, 20 years ago. Why are states that have a major, <coughs> a major industry funding large investors that are running around telling everyone, hey, in order to get a better interest rate on your loans, you know, from us, you're going to have to um, boycott the oil and gas industry. Why would you do that? That's the stupidest thing ever. No, no sane person would ever do that. No sane person's going to give someone money to stab them in the back. And that's what's happening. What I think needs to happen, you see, the whole Sweet Baby Inc. thing even is a distraction. Everybody's fixated on SBI, but there's all these other firms that do the same thing. Hell, before that, it was Feminist Frequency with Anita Sarkeesian. You know, you want to complain about Sweet Baby Inc. all day long, but while you're staring at this stupid image of a smiling baby with a fucking pedo spiral lollipop in the middle, you know, while you're fixated on, that, on the Sweet Baby Inc. pedophile spiral logo... Um, you're not paying attention to all the other companies that are doing it, but more importantly, where this is coming from in the first place. The government should not be taxing people and then spending those taxpayer dollars on grants to pay for this stuff. Government grants, in I, this is going to get into libertarian philosophy, pretty friggin' radical libertarian philosophy. <clears throat> the federal government has an extremely limited scope in which it's actually allowed to operate under the Constitution. This scope was massively expanded in Wickard v. Filburn, not Wickard, but Wicker v. Filburn, a, um, a Supreme Court case about wheat, where this guy was farming wheat on his farm and the federal government screwed with him, and the Supreme Court seriously said, yes, the federal government has jurisdiction over this guy in a state make growing wheat for his own consumption in his own state. <clears throat> they use the Commerce Clause to justify it, right? Here's the twisted logic. The Commerce Clause basically grants the federal government the right to mediate disputes between states. <clears throat> basically, interstate commerce is regulated by the federal government, which makes sense. If North and South Carolina have a disagreement, the feds can step in and mediate. Solve the problem. So here's the twisted logic of Wickard v. Filburn, which really desperately needs to be repealed. It needs to be thrown out badly. Guy in state is not selling his wheat to anybody out of the state. He's growing wheat in state for his own personal consumption in state. And the feds... Supreme Court said can regulate him because if he's growing wheat, he could, he could sell that wheat across state lines. He doesn't have to sell the wheat across state lines, which is literally what the Commerce Clause allows you to do. Now the simple fact that they can find a way to say he could participate in interstate commerce with this, he doesn't have to. He just has to potentially, there has to be an avenue that exists for them to be able to. Now the feds can step in and do whatever they want to regulate it. That's Wicker v. Filburn. Needs to go. Needs to be thrown out, but nobody's doing anything about that. <clears throat> it expanded the Commerce Clause so greatly beyond what the Constitution allows. Which means now anything that has the potential to have anything to do with interstate commerce can be federally regulated. That's where all this stuff comes from. The feds are legally allowed to do it. it. It's BS. I mean, do I really need to tell you that the feds should not be able to regulate intrastate commerce? I, states were supposed to be their own entities. And I know we're talking about, like, Supreme Court cases from decades ago, many, many decades ago, way before I was ever born, way before most of you were ever born. You might be like, how the hell did we get there from here? We're talking about Sweet Baby Inc. and, and Woke Gaming. But somebody's paying for that woke gaming. <clears throat> the government's paying. The federal government of the United States of America is taxing you, taking your tax dollars, and paying this consultancy company. They may also be giving money to BlackRock and other large companies to do the same. Government grants. It's government grants, but that's the problem. It's government grants. A government grant means it's tax money that was taken from you 
to, and the government's paying for someone to do something. Well, the federal government, if, if they're giving out a government grant, that's probably something they shouldn't be doing. In fact, I'd, I would venture so far as to say all government grants are unconstitutional. They are not constitutionally valid. Um, they're overreaches of the federal government. But especially this, you have the feds literally paying to wokeify games. <clears throat> it is not, I mean, it's arguably, like I said, not even the game companies at fault. The game companies um, need to know, however, and this is why the attack has to face the game companies directly, because when they calculate this, they, they go, hey, so we need to take out a million dollar loan to release, you know, stellar blade of, of soul reaper machine gun butts, uh, non-butts because, you know, you're not allowed to have sexy butts, uh, uh, seven, you know, with AOL top speed technology, I don't know. Uh, we need a million dollars to make no butts, and we, we got these loan options, and if we hire this consultancy firm, we'll save 20 grand off the million dollar loan, so why wouldn't we hire the consultancy company for, you know, eight grand or whatever to save 20, which is, you know, 12. I don't, these were just, I'm dicking around with numbers, these aren't the exact numbers, but this is the way the calculations work. <clears throat> so if they find out that by hiring the uh, company and saving the 10 or 20 grand, that they're actually going to lose 50 grand or 100 grand or whatever in final sales, thus harming their ability to repay that loan on time, never mind, you know, paying the people that work there and so on, gamers, and this works in the whole market, but we're talking about games, so gamers who pay money for product have to make it clear, we will not pay money for product if it contains this, this uh, artificially, you know, injected woke garbage. If you're taking this game and you're shoving all this artificial crap into it, you know, we're not going to buy it. So that now the 100,000 or 500,000 or whatever it is, I mean, make it 100,000. Fuck, make it 50,000. Now, if they lose $50,000 on this big title, you know, $50,000 worth of sales, you know, it dings their ability to pay back the loan. They've lost fifty. They've not lost ten. <clears throat> sales were massively worse than anticipated. Well, why? Well, the gamers are literally out there telling you, hey, I didn't buy your game because I don't like this crap that you put into it. What are they going to do the next time BlackRock goes, you have to hire an ESG consultancy firm to help you produce this game, uh, or else we're going to charge you a higher interest rate. They're going to go, well, fuck you, pay, I'll pay the higher interest rate, because I'll be paying you 20 grand more in interest, but I'll make 200 grand more in sales. That's 180 grand more money, because now it's clear to me that I need to factor this into this equation and holy shit, look at all the money we're leaving on the table by actually hiring that consultancy firm. Look at all the money we're leaving on the table by not putting a nice ass in the game. Look at all the money we're leaving on the table by not having a nice fat meaty pair of boobies in the game. Boy, I went real redneck with that one, didn't I? Now you know I'm a North Carolina boy who loves his barbecue. But th this is the equation, and this is how it works, and this is the reason that you have to go after the game companies directly. Because if you post on Twitter that BlackRock are assholes, they are not going to care. BlackRock doesn't deal with you. The game companies pay them money. The game companies get the loans and pay back the interest. They don't care. What we need to see to stop companies like this, this Sweet Baby Inc. thing what we need to do to get all of this political artificial injection out of gaming and go back to making good gameplay, good stories, characters that are aesthetically pleasing and interesting instead of characters that all look like ugly men. The only way to make that happen <coughs> is a multi-pronged approach. I would call it cancellation, but it really is a boycott. I've made a video before about how boycotts are not cancel culture. Boycotts are not cancel culture because cancel culture is where you latch on to someone and you go after them and attempt to destroy them for disagreeing with you. But a boycott is different. A boycott is where a company 
produces a product, offers it up for sale, and you say, no, I will not purchase your product. On that end, you need to boycott all of these games or anything. Any, any game. It doesn't have to be a game. It can be a book. It can be a movie, a streaming service that produces nothing but woke garbage or a lot of woke garbage. Don't pay them. Just don't pay them. Don't just don't pay them. Let them know why you're not paying them. Let everyone else know why you're not paying them. Because if you go out there and say, I cancel my Disney Plus subscription <clears throat> because I know that there's all these shows that are politically motivated and I don't like that. These shows suck. I don't enjoy them. I cancel my Disney Plus subscription and if you don't like this kind of stuff, you ought to too. I'm not paying them for shitty shows. Once someone sees other people stand up and take action to stop it, they feel more comfortable to also say, yeah, I'm also canceling my Disney Plus subscription. I'm going to go buy some flour from Netflix and for some reason it'll be black, so I'll cancel that too. Whoever heard of black flour? Apparently Netflix found a way to make that happen. That, that's an internet joke that's going around right now. Boy, I've really dated this video, haven't I? If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But we need to see customers boycott and very vocally say, I don't like this content, I cancel my subscription. I don't like this content, I did not buy your game. Say it directly to them. <clears throat> you don't have to be like, you pricks or whatever. You don't have to be abusive or rude or anything. In fact, you can be nice if you want to. You say, I've liked this other stuff that wasn't woke that you produced in the past, but these games have this political garbage injected into them. I don't like it. It's not enjoyable for me, so I can't pay you money. Sorry, I'm no longer your customer. Solve the problem and let us know, and maybe I'll come back. That will do more to change the industry than any of this Twitter keyboard warrior shit. On the other end, you do need to push for your politicians. You need to vote out all the, all the incumbents, first of all. <clears throat> all these people that have been professional politicians for decades need to go uh, because they are the power structure that, that enables these grants for these companies to shovel this woke crap down your throat. You need to get rid of the, the, um, the career politicians. You need to get rid of the leftists that push this extremist crap. And, you know, so politically you need to vote the bums out. But you, the bums that stay in, you need to call them. You can go to whoaremyrepresentatives.com or org or something like that. But just go type, who are my representatives? If you're in the United States, you can find out. Get on the phone, call your state um, Congress people, senators, your federal Congress and senators, all of them, and let them know, I don't support this. I want this stuff to stop. I don't want to see, you know, teacher retirement, you know, any, any public employees. I don't want to see their retirement plans investing in this stuff that directly harms my industry or you know the state or whatever so you need to you need to play get play ball here don't buy the product let them know why you're not buying the product on the other end get these in, these big investors get them out of the politics force them out take their money away all wars are wars of attrition starve the beasts blackrock will change its tune real fast once BlackRock starts losing mad money because now nobody's even trying to invest with them because they don't want to support this bullshit. <clears throat> I told you I was sick. Those are the two big things, well, three big things that you can do to solve this problem. Stop paying people who hate you and want you dead. Make no mistake, they do want you dead. You see the way some of these people talk about people that disagree with them? I mean, they basically wish genocide upon them. They call you racist, supremacist, all this stuff. They call you the worst names in the book. They imply that people like that need to be eradicated from the gene pool by any means necessary. They mean kill you. And you're paying them money. You're giving these game companies money. 
thereby, by giving the game companies money, you give the companies that they get the loans from money to hate you. And all of those people that work there, all those Wokies that work there, they hate you. And you're paying their paychecks when you buy that stupid game. You don't like anything. You need to vote with your wallet. Enough people do it and say why, the problem will get solved. And never forget, and I, I don't understand why more people aren't saying anything about this. Um, and this kind of winds back to Sweet Baby Inc. where I started. It's possible that it's a coincidence, that it's just a classic lollipop spiral inside the baby thing. But, I mean, come on, man. <clears throat> How can you look at the logo of this fucking company? A, a smiling baby with a spiral in the middle. And then, no, because I've seen these... There is, um, in general, the the two things that are used to signify pedophilia or pro-pedophilia or whatever. Um, you've got the map flag, which is like this pastel blue, pink, yellow. I don't know. Um, I don't remember the colors. <coughs> um, the minor attracted persons flag, but bigger than that, you have the pedo spirals. And I'm surprised nobody's really hammered that. You literally have a baby with a spiral pattern in the middle as the logo of this company. Is like if you know about like the, the triangle or heart-shaped pedo spirals to indicate they like little boys or little girls in a in a carnal way, if you know these symbols exist and you see this logo, how do you not see um, I I do big harm to infants uh, you know incorporated? Like, it's like all the, all the red flags, all the red flags in one place. What are you, just, what are you doing, man? How, how do you see this and, and unsee it? How, how is it that so many people have looked at this logo and nobody has just gone off on the, on the infant with a pedo spiral in the middle? And I know it's not, it's not quite the same. It's a, it's a two way spiral. It's not the same as the one-way shaped spiral that they use, but, like, seriously, man, how could you look at that and think anything else? Who the hell calls their adult video game narrative <coughs> company Sweet Baby Incorporated with an infant with a pedo spiral in it? Come on! Why? How is nobody talking about that? God! Like I said, you get rid of them by getting rid of their funding. You make the company look bad. You get the government to stop feeding them grant money. And you get the game companies to stop being forced to hire them. Once you take all their money away, all of their sources of income, they go away. They might rebrand, but just keep doing it. And don't limit your, don't limit your examination to Sweet Baby Inc., Go look through the credits of all the games that suck. Start drawing those lines between those things in the credits. Oh, I've noticed that XYZ Company is listed in the credits of half these games that suck. Ah, maybe there's something to that. Let's look into that company. Make these connections. Call out all of them. Find the games. Don't buy them. Tell your friends not to buy them. Tell them why. In the words of James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, a person who I admire and respect, if you know that you're not going to like something, why are you giving them your money? Why would you give them your money? Just don't go pay for it. I sort of paraphrase that. Anyway, my voice is giving out. I have to stop, and I don't really have much else to say. But there's, there's your rolling ramble for the day, man. Did the microphone battery last one more session? It did. Oh, thank God. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay safe out there. Oh, boy. It's hell. Take care.